Let's move on to other stories. Ten basic schools in the Ebura Esebu Kwamankese district in the central region are at risk of being closed down. The schools have become death traps posing danger to teachers and pupils. School authorities and pupils are appealing for immediate intervention to avert any tragedy. My colleague Richard Kwejonyako has visited a number of these schools and has put together this report. Public basic schools in the country just reopened for the second term of the academic year. And the joy of every school people is to return to school and sit in a safer and a comfortable classroom for lessons. But that appears to be an expensive commodity for some school peoples here in the Abra Asebu Kwamankese district. For most of them, they are already weak buildings they were studying in before the vacation have collapsed and that leaves them with very little option. As you can see behind me, this is the classroom block housing the KG and the primary. Before school vacated, the upper part of the structure was uh, ripped off by rainstorm. We managed to roof it, but two days to the reopening, the entire block was ripped off again by rainstorm as a result of the weak nature of the structure. Samuel Butchi is the head teacher of a Saman AME Zion Basic School. He says the school is overwhelmed with the weak nature of the structures and the fact that the school pupils would not have a good place to learn. Because of the poor nature and the dangerous nature of the classroom, we have managed to secure temporal permission from a, a church where the students are, the primary students are currently uh, staying, but they are not learning because there are no uh, chalkboards or marker boards for them to uh, learn. And the, the size of the church itself, it is not conducive for all the dexes to be put in there. Uh, we don't have ICT, uh, say computers for ICT. There's none, we don't have any. Electricity source to the school we have, but it is not all that stable. It fluctuates. Uh, a lot of challenges. Nancy Abio heads the Mori DA Basic B School. A visit to her school revealed cracks on the walls. The roof of the story building the children are studying under has been ripped off, but nothing has been done for many months. When it rains, disaster strikes. The floor and the beams are all coming down. I quite remember one of the teachers was around when they, they fixed a window and the window also came out just because of the rusting of the hinges. So the children are in danger because even in the classroom, you realize that the beams will be falling in bits, which is affecting learning. When it comes that way, the teachers and the children find it difficult to stay back in the classroom. Then around to the compound, you can see that one of our old buildings, the first building, is also sunk. If I say it's sinking, it means it's still going. But this one, it has gone down. So anytime it rains, it flows over to the veranda and then enters the classroom to spoil the uh, books that you've stored. And that makes the school to be out of session for a whole day because you have to collect the water from the classroom and then tidy up all those things that have been soaked. This is also the Strafa DA Basic School in the same district. The school pupils have nowhere to go except to put up a temporary structure. Ezekiel Lanson is the headmaster of the school. Just uh, last month, that was in March, last two months, there was some torrential rains that ripped off my teacher's building. And currently, the children have nowhere to sit and study. So what we've done is to make a temporary structure. And this very temporary uh, structure is what is used in housing the GHS three students. 
this situation is affecting teaching and learning. Currently, this classroom has no uh, permanent chalk box, uh, chalk uh, board. So what we do is, we have a, a white board, a marker, a very small one. So as and when we need it, then we come to fix it here. Then we teach the children. Because of that, our KG1 and 2 have been merged. It's now a multi-grade class. So we've now sent class uh, Form 2 to uh, KG1 class. So currently what we've done is we've written to GS, to our district director, notifying her about the situation here. And then uh, she has also given up a covering letter to the district assembly. So the DC has come to see the situation or the problem at hand here. And it's assuring that the government will do something. So he'll forward it up. The situation is dire for many of the schools here. Isaac Donko is a head teacher for the Asamasi AME Zion Basic School. Now, our main challenge is the structure or where the, the peoples will live and study. It collapsed last term and the PTA tried to raise it, but a rainstorm came to uh, collapse the, the structure they tried to raise. So the, when we opened today, students came. They started clearing up the place. But because they did not find a comfortable place to live, they, they have all dispersed to their various homes. So this is the main challenge we are facing in the school. And it's causing other students to also stop from coming to this uh, place. They are finding themselves to the nearby schools like Abakrampa, uh, Pepeja, and other uh, places where they can find a comfortable place to study. The DC for the district, Winivans Ubriyabua, says the assembly is getting overwhelmed with reports of weak school structures and collapsed school buildings as a result of the rainstorm that hit the area. Most of our schools have gotten their roofs ripped off. And it is also affecting teaching and learning in the various schools. This one, for instance, we've gone around most of the, the, the communities and we are experiencing such disasters. Currently, the best option for us to go is to get the roofs fixed. But the assembly, as we are all aware, we are challenged financially and we are overwhelmed with uh, the degree of damage which the storm has caused to our schools. Currently, we cannot house most of our children in the schools. So the middle steps for us to take is to find them some place to have the schools being organized. Thereafter, as in the interim, but we should get a lasting solution to these challenges. So it's an appeal we are making to all well-meaning Ghanaians to come to our aid. Because looking at our coffers, we don't have that muzzle to uh, get the roofs fixed. And we also don't want to disturb learning and teaching in the various schools. So we are making a passionate appeal to benevolent societies and corporate bodies. The district NADMO coordinator, Semaila Kabori, says his outfit is undertaking an assessment of the situation. He is appealing for support in order to get the school pupils back to the classroom. Our outfit is not something that should rely on currently as we have nothing in our stocks. I've already sent my report to the regional director and I'm sure he will be forwarding to the national and we are waiting for national. So we actually fall in the disassembly. That's why we went around with the disassembly officials and then the education directors, reps and representatives 
so that we go around to find out the actual state of the destruction and find out how we can try to remedy the situation in order to bring the people to classroom. For now, the schools risk being shut down if they do not get any support. The head teachers have been making several appeals. So uh, we met as staff and PTA chairman to find interim solution to this challenge because we can't hang around like that. So we, we have discussed that they should find a place for us to stay, maybe raising canopies so that we can get some uh, cardboard, uh, plywood so that we can use as a chalkboard for now and take their time to raise the structure for us. The, I'm appealing to the general public, uh, institutions and corporate bodies that can help the children of Strafa D to have a conducive environment, to learn so that tomorrow they will also take up the leadership mantle to move our country forward. We are appealing to them to come and help us put up some classroom structures for them so that the children can sit comfortably to learn as their counterparts are doing in other parts of the country. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kwejenya Akon, Cape Coast. We can now speak with uh, the District Chief Executive of the area, Mr. Obri Ewa, who has joined us uh, right now. Uh, for more, thanks so much for your time, sir. Why has the Assembly looked on for the structures to become so weak? Well, uh, yeah, thanks for your time and your choice, viewers and listeners. In fact, um, the Assembly haven't uh, looked unconcerned. We were just hit by a dead storm that has derooted these schools. But looking at our looking at our financial constraints for place, we are financially handicapped, as I mentioned earlier. And then, um, you know, since uh, the school has resumed, they need an immediate solution to the problem. That's why we want to make a passing appeal to benevolent societies, changes and other philanthropists to come to our aid. So it's not a matter of we, the assembly, looking unconcerned to the plight of the people. So immediately, I mean, what, what uh, is the plan for these structures to be fixed so that you can create a conducive learning environment for the pupils? Right now, we need to uh, go out there to re-roof the, the buildings and see how best we can uh, bring them back to the various classrooms and schools. So, uh, you know, the staff was, they were on strike and said, we should get resumed. So we need to put an emergency uh, meeting so that we call people on board so that we can plan ahead. You haven't done the emergency meeting yet? School has already reopened? Yeah, you know, school reopened while the staff were on strike. So we've asked some few churches to accommodate the children as we also look at solutions to the problem. So currently, where are the children? They are in the various churches that are just around this affected area. They have also erected some sheds. You, you agree <laughs> that those sheds uh, really will not make uh, a conducive environment for these uh, pupils to study in? How? Um, it doesn't make so. Yes. Yeah, so how? Quick, are you going to get this fixed so that the children can re return back to their classrooms? Well, this is a headache and a blow to the assembly. So that's why we are making a appeal to people to come to our aid. And so then we keep them uh, hovering them in the uh, churches. And so people come to your aid, the pupils would have to be in those tents. Is that what you're saying? For now, that will be the best option for now, until we get the room. The room. And you're saying that you need uh, people to come to your aid to roof the structures. So until people come to your aid, the kids would have to be in those sheds, correct? I'm saying we are financially constrained. So we are putting pieces together 
So it's also an appeal that I'm making to people who can also come to our aid. Alongside the operation towards getting the roof new roof. So the assembly itself, what is your contribution to um, getting this fixed? I mean, how much are you willing to pump in to ensure that this is done? I know, I know you're making an appeal to the public to come to your raid, but what kind of funds or don't you have internally generated funds to actually deal with this situation? But, uh, no, for now, but what we have is hopefully inadequate. So we have to suspend all other activities and concentrate on this very one because it needs immediate attention. So are you able to give us uh, timelines? Well, uh, I'm not sure. I can't. You're not sure when the children will get out of the tent, right? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm grateful for your time. Ubri Ewa is the CEO of Ebura Sebukwa Mankese. He says that they are uh, looking forward to people supporting them to fix the structures. Until then, the kids would have to make up in those tents.